Hi, welcome. And I'm now in the office of our webmaster, Kevin. And the, the, the website has gotten so, mm, so it gets quite a few page views. We, we, we average about a million a month. And when you have a website that is that popular, when our forums in particular get huge amounts of traffic, you, you, if you want to do it right, you're going to have to have a full-time webmaster, and this is his, his place. He's got, what do we got here? We got Einstein, and I don't know. I'm probably too old to know what that is. Some kind of duck with hair. Anyway, um, and then Kevin is a three-screen kind of guy. I mean, pretty cool. Okay, <clears throat> what do we got? Brian in Western Pennsylvania. I'm taking the plunge in getting a DSJ, which is our Direct Stream Junior. Yes, good job. Which should arrive sometime next week. You mentioned the extra detail that can, that can be found on one CD collection. Most of my music is stored on a network drive as lossless CD quality, or better, along with some native DSD. Do any of the benefits that apply to CDs specifically also apply to saved network files or title streaming. So basically, Brian wants to know <coughs> if, if I have a CD and I play it on a good transport, or I have the same CD that's ripped to a NAS drive, is there any difference in sound? Or if I stream one from title? And it's a good question, one we get asked a lot because there are differences and yet there shouldn't be. And the reason there shouldn't be is because the digital data that is actually on that CD, if it's ripped, let's just assume it's all ripped properly, right? The digital data on that CD is identical to the data that is on Tidal or on your NAS, and yet they will sound different. Now this is a problem that we have struggled to figure out a way around. Because we know in our hearts and minds as engineers that it shouldn't be that way. Identical data should perform identically, should sound identically. But that's kind of like saying every 400 horsepower automobile that weighs the same amount is going to finish this, the the the, uh, the fi is going to go across the finish line at the same time. No, they're not, because while they have the same engine and the same weight, maybe they don't have the same aerodynamics. Maybe they don't have the same traction. Maybe maybe a whole bunch of things. the The point is, looking at one small subset, digital data and the veracity of that digital data is only a little bit of the problem. When you think about digital audio, there are so many factors. There's noise, there's jitter, there's, um, oh, uh, well, and noise can come in radiated, it can come in through the, the connections, um, through how you're connecting, whether it's an ethernet cable, which theoretically shouldn't, if I babble for a moment, because Ethernet has transformers that isolate every one of the lines, and therefore it's only magnetically coupled, nothing physical touching. Yet, there are differences when we use Ethernet and their, uh, versus other forms of getting it in. So I guess my point is that so far, we've not been able in a DAC to isolate perfectly everything that comes into it, okay? There are other factors. For example, our network bridge, that's inside of your, your new DirectStream Junior that's coming, uh, or if you have a, a server or whatever, but, but the bridge is our way of getting network traffic from Ethernet into your DAC, all right? Now that's built into the DSJ. If you play a FLAC file, free lossless audio encoder, right? It's for, or ALAC, or, which is Apple's equivalent of, of FLAC. If you play one of those, 
the processor in the bridge has to work twice as hard as if you play a wave file. Now, so what? If you have enough horsepower in the bridge, it shouldn't matter, right? But it does matter because the bridge, it, it's not an island. It's not sitting all by itself. It's interconnected inside of this DAC drawing power from the supply. And when the bridge grinds harder to convert and decode flack into wave so that our DAC can understand that, that extra horsepower, those extra MIPS as we would refer to them, um, just slang for uh, millions of instructions per second, but just sort of geek talk. As it works harder, you're drawing more current out of the power supply. More current out of the power supply creates more noise uh, on the, the common lines that go through there. The processor inside of the bridge radiates more energy, and if we haven't been perfectly cap careful in isolating it, that energy will get into the grounds, which will then cause jitter through the DAC, and it'll sound different. This is a very complex system. We haven't perfected it yet. We're working on it. But in direct answer to your question, and I know a lot of engineering types so oh, hogwash. We can, you know, dither, uh, uh, or sorry, jitter is is, uh, is is so far down the road that, that it doesn't matter. Well, there's a couple of great series if you really want to learn from the master, Ted Smith. If you look on our YouTube channel, go look up jitter. And Ted will do a much better job than I at explaining the effects of jitter. And he, he does it in a much better engineering fashion than I would, just babbling here on these things. But it all matters. It is different. We are working on a solution. We believe we know how to do it, but it will be many generations from now that we finally, if ever, figure it out. Thank you for the question. Talk to you tomorrow. Bye.